delighted to be interviewing Catherine Green. Now, she's a, an author of adult paranormal romance, um, deals with werewolves and witches and demons and vampires and all that kind of thing. Really interesting. Um, so, uh, hello, Catherine. Hello, Sue. Nice to be here today. <laughs> Um, okay, so it's over to you, really. Um, so, who is Catherine Green? Um, yeah, who are you as a person? Who um, am I? That's a question. Yeah. Um, well, online, I masquerade as Spooky Mrs. Green. Uh, that's my main blog, and all of my social profiles are listed under uh, under that tag. Um, I was not always Spooky Mrs. Green. It came about when I first joined Twitter a few years ago. And, well, more than a few years ago now, actually. Um, at the time when I joined, I was planning my wedding and I didn't know what Twitter name to take. So back then I called myself Nearly Mrs. Green because, yeah, I was just obsessed with wedding planning. <laughs> and then once I got married, I thought, oh, I'd better change that. What should I change it to? And then I was in the, um, in the throes of ghost hunting. I was out just about every weekend doing hunts with a, a group called Northwest Spirit Seekers, um, exploring haunted houses and castles and stately homes and even um, underground tunnels and all sorts of places. So I decided to be Spooky Mrs. Green and it stuck and I kind of like it now because people pick up on that and when they see me, I've had a, a few people recently who I've um, met out and about in public and we'll be talking or I, you know, catching up and, and all of a sudden they'll just go oh, you're spooky mrs green off, the, off, off twitter <laughs> and, and the light dawns and everybody gets really excited <laughs> i think it's a i think it's perfect actually for what you do it because what you do is kind of uh it's well what you write about is quite spooky well it is it, yes it, it's i mean it's sort of it came about really before i'd even got published so it was quite handy to have that name to apply everything to because that is that is just my fascination is yeah everything that uh, that is supernatural what how did you get started with um i mean how did you get started with uh, the vampires and um and all that kind of thing what, what drew you to that specifically um it wasn't always the kind of the vampires and werewolves that i was interested in when i was a child I was fascinated with ghost stories. Uh, any any time I heard about something that was repeatedly haunted or a local legend, my ears would prick up. I would be really excited and I'd want to know all about it. Um, you know things like legends of cursed trees and one of my favourites as a child was the legend of the chained oak in Alton Towers uh, theme park in Staffordshire because I grew up near there and Alton Towers has always been sort of central in, in my life and those of my friends and my family and, and we went and visited the actual real life chained oak tree uh, in the woods which just it's just fantastic because it set my imagination wild <laughs> going up there it still does now whenever we go for walks and um, I just love visiting it and then as I got older um, I used to watch a tv series called Strange But True and if you ever if you've ever watched it yeah with a little bit that kind of those stories and uh, and then I began to discover there were other creatures in the world you know, the vampires, werewolves, uh, witches, I just whatever I could find in the library to read about that had those creatures and I would, I would read it and when I was I think I was about 17 I discovered a series called Night World by LJ Smith and that was a series about vampires and that really sparked i suppose the beginning of my um author journey if you like because when i read those novels i started to get an idea for my own vampire story but i just kind of nurtured it for, for many years probably almost 10 years i think it was before i actually wrote it down and, and turned it into the red Cliff novels yeah. it's interesting because um yeah, Catherine is uh, one of the uh, very, very valued authors on Soulfully Connecting, and one of um, her articles she wrote about uh, just seeing a neighbour and creating this story, and that fascinated me because um, it's just you could just bringing every just normal things and creating something with them. I think that's uh, 
Is, is that what you've always done from a child up, just created stories around people? Yes, I think so. I just, everywhere I go, I see something that has a story. I mean, just the other day I was, uh, I was walking home from, I don't know where I'd been, somewhere in town for an appointment or something, and I was wasting it across it to cross the road, and I saw a little pothole in the road that was full of rainwater, and the cars were splashing through a puddle. Um, and I just started imagining a little bit of a story about that pothole or that little puddle, just completely out of the blue, but it, it kept me entertained while I waited for the traffic lights to change. <laughs> <laughs> and I know you've got two young daughters. I, I suppose they um, they have take have a, the advantage of having a, an imaginative mother with the stories. Yes, I think they do. We, we do love making up stories and. Um, Thing. I mean, I was very proud just a few weeks ago, my elder daughter, who just turned five, she came home from school with a certificate for beautiful handwriting, and I was very proud. I said, oh, you've got that from your mother. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they, yeah, they do love their stories. They're always, they're always wanting to, to do writing like mummy. Yeah. <laughs> Telling so, tales. Yeah, it, I mean... Um, I mean, I like writing and, and stuff as well. And it, it is, it's just, I, and I don't like writing factual stuff. It's all pure imagination. And you can do anything. Um, you just let your imagination run wild. And um, it, it's great not to be tied down to actual facts, isn't it? It is, yes. I mean, that's it. It's, I like to think about the extraordinary within the ordinary world. Because yeah. sometimes... Sometimes the, you know the, the sort of the real world gets a little bit monotonous, and sometimes it's not so pleasant. And actually, it's quite nice to have these other worlds and other creatures existing among us that we can, you know, dream about yeah. and, and create, just to liven things up a little bit. I know, and I think um, also when you're on a spiritual path as well, which I know you are, um, it's also. Um, you wonder what's your imagination and what's what's actually being sent to you. Do you get that feeling? Yes, with a sort of sixth sense speaking to you. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think so. I mean, people talk about the writer having a muse when when we create our stories and um, our characters and settings, and um, and certainly I did do. You know, I've done I've done a lot of, sort of meditation and. and spiritual journey over the years and um, in more recent years I directed that into my writing um, and I actively sort of connected with my muse if you like and um, tried to try to understand what it what it is that helps me to create these stories what it is that sends these these creatures and these characters to me yeah I mean I you can't describe it can you it's um, yeah, it's, 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 it's certainly, whether it's the workings of the mind or something that we just can't explain, I think it's fascinating when you start exploring it. It is, isn't it? Because I know, um, you know, when, when I get down to writing an article and things, um, suddenly like a germ of an idea will come and then other things come and then suddenly I have to sit, sit down and write it straight away. Um, do, you find, do you find that or do you... Um, schedule times when you, you write um, more structured? No, I don't really schedule it as such. I mean, I, I do sort of restrict myself to working around the children. It's, it's not easy to sit and write my stories when they're running right behind me. But um, I think in terms of the actual creative side of it, I have to write it when it's there. And I'll, I'll set myself out a time slot if I feel like I need to do something and I've got this idea in my mind then I'll perhaps sit down for a couple of hours maybe during the day when they're at school or in the evening when they're in bed um, and sometimes the work will flow and I'll just lose you know two hours as I'm writing other times I sort of sit there staring at the screen and wondering how to articulate what it is that's in my mind mm, okay um, but I certainly have more of a go with the flow attitude on this. And then, so, I mean, sometimes I don't write for, you know, for a week or more, or maybe longer than that. I won't write anything new, but I'll just work on existing projects if I feel like yeah. that break. 
I'm, I'm a great one for going with the flow myself. I think that's the only way to go, really. <laughs> <laughs> What's, um, what are your major challenges um, with being an author? For me, it's the PR side of things. Yeah. Uh, it's very challenging now to get your voice heard out there, to get your book seen by the people that want to see them. Yeah. Um, I mean, we, as much as we are constantly being told that ours is the, you know, the social media revolution and we have so much access to communication nowadays that we didn't have, say, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago. Um, it's, at the same time, it makes it more difficult because there, there are more and more people with the same sorts of messages trying to make themselves heard. And it's not really about who shouts the loudest nowadays, it's about who shouts in the right places to the right people that can project them yeah. into the conscious mind. Um, and when I just want to spend my time writing more stories, I'm having to break away from that and focus on the promotion, you know, the networking and getting getting some advertising out there and I have to do all of that myself. So it yeah. all takes time and takes the time away from the creativity. Yeah, the so social media world is really um, taken up with this and there's there's so much there's so much um, variety on there as well and it's and there's there's an awful lot of rubbish that goes around as well so it, it's um it's difficult i find i kind of get overwhelmed with all the social media that comes my way and you think well you know what do i look at and what 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 don't i it's um and that's time consuming actually seeing what comes into the um the inbox as it were um, and I remember somebody on Twitter once, and um, it, it was funny, he, he, he put, I've been away for a minute, what have I missed? <laughs> yes, it's not right. I know. It's been amazing me when I'm on Twitter, and my, I'll just sort of flip onto my Twitter feed just for a quick update on something, and within 30 seconds I've got about, I don't know, 100 new tweets to read, and I just haven't got a clue, I just can't keep up with it. <laughs> I know, but then also you can't just post about your own stuff. You've got to, you've got, you've really got to communicate with people because it is a conversation. And I think that's what, that's the issue, isn't it? It's finding time to communicate to a lot of people. Um, yeah, that really is, is quite an issue. Yes, I find it's, um, it's been a, a real challenge for me because I can, I can write, you know, really well. I could just put pen to paper if you like or fingers to keyboard and words can flow but when it comes to actually speaking to somebody um, sometimes I find myself just drifting or repeating myself or just not knowing what to say. Yeah, I'm yeah. Able to do that on a social platform and you know and, um, and give people something while I say it and it's yeah well it, it's a study of its own. Yeah small talk isn't easy is it? Um, when, when, you, when you've got a definite message to pass on, it, it becomes, um, yeah, <laughs> it's not always <laughs> easy. <laughs> so um, what are the specific joys you have um, with kind of uh, your writing and things and it's your journey? Stories, I just love the, the process. I love words, I always have them. And um, I mean, I'll, I'll read anything, you know, I'll read the back of the cereal packet, and, you know, and, um, I can't. I can't walk past the shelf of books without stopping to at least just see what's on, on the signs and maybe pick one or two of them up and just, you know, touch the cover and open them up and have a look at the words, even if I just glance at it. It's, um, it's just something magical about it. And all of those stories and, and all of those worlds that you can explore. And I love that I can contribute to that and I have my own novels and, I, you know, I, Every time I look at my own bookshelf now and see my novels on there, I just smile to myself because it's really exciting. Yeah, that's exciting. About, <laughs> yeah, I know you've, you've written the uh, Redcliffe novels and kind of various um, other ones. What are you working on at the moment? At the moment, I have book four in the Redcliffe novel series in progress. The, the draft is done, um, but I'm in the editing stages now. And I'm, then I have to work on getting it published, which I'm hoping to do later on this year. Um, but before that, there's another novel that I'd like to get published, which is called The Vampire of Blackpool. 
Okay. <laughs> That's not a regular. My dad came from that part of the world, so I'll be interested. Pardon? My dad came from that part of the world. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, well, again, Blackpool is just a place that I've always loved. I've always visited for holidays as a child and um, you know, grown up with it. Uh, we were there for the Illuminations just last year. And, um, yeah, it just seemed, it seemed to me that Blackpool needed a vampire. <laughs> so yeah. I decided to write the story. <laughs> so you've given them one. <laughs> and that is my next project. I need to get the story out there. This one is, um, it's about an old vampire that has become a bit reclusive and then she is drawn out of her reclusive lifestyle by a hunter that comes comes after her basically because he's um he's been sent to find out what's killing all of these humans and uh, and he decides he needs to destroy her and so the story ensues and i've thrown in a, a, a witch into the mix as well just for a little bit of excitement we have a, a young witch love interest for the vampire just confused <laughs> Into inter, inter species. <laughs> so it was a bit like a detective story in a way. Um, I wouldn't say detective story specifically. It's more probably probably more action than anything. There's a few um, fight scenes in there, and it gets a bit a bit violent in places. I never intend for that to happen, but there always seems to be a bit of a violent element in my stories. <laughs> Maybe, maybe it's your subconscious, your, your subconscious, the way it gets out. <laughs> maybe, yes. Yeah, so there's a warrior in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, would you like to mention something about the Scribe Festival? Because uh, I know you're very heavily involved in that. Yes, definitely. Um, Scribe is Middle Witch Literary Festival, which is up here in, um, in South Cheshire. Um, it takes place in October. So in 2016, it's from the 13th to the 16th of October, and that will take place in Middlewich. We haven't yet confirmed the venues because we're currently setting up what we're going to do. Um, but there will be short story competitions for both adults and children that anybody can enter. And the details are all on the website, which is scribefest.org. Um, or you can search on Twitter for scribefest which is the hashtag we're using. And uh, we will bring in, we have um, authors involved in there. We'll be doing some workshops, writing-based workshops, and we'll have authors in there that will be demonstrating their books. We're planning possibly something along the, um, the themes of crime writing this year, but it's not confirmed yet. So I won't say too much because we're still in, in discussions. Yes, yeah, all will be revealed in time. Yeah. Uh, it, it should be good. It's good. The, last, the one we had in 2015 was really good fun. We enjoyed it. We had a good mix of people that turned up, and uh, it was just nice to have that that literary element in the town. Yeah, I think it, I think it's um it's so important to bring up young writers as well, isn't it? And let the children it is. get their imagination going. Yes, definitely. I mean, we, we ran the short story competition last year with the, I mean, the quality of the, the stories that we had, certainly from the teenagers that took part, was just, it was just incredible. It wasn't even, uh, I think some of our younger story writers were about 12 yeah. from local schools, and we were just amazed at what they came up with. It was just brilliant. So it was really nice to discover the new talent and then to encourage them to take it further. Yeah. Um, and of course, then I got to speak to some of the parents of these children that, that won the competitions and that, that um, were shortlisted. And it was just so nice to see the parents, you know, really engaging and really excited and encouraging the children to take it further. I expect some of the parents are quite surprised, actually. Yes, I think they were. I mean, one or two of them that spoke to me were not surprised about their, you know, their particular son or daughter that um, got through to the final, if you like. Um, and they, they came up to me and sort of said, oh, yeah, you know, they've, they've been doing this for a while. They're always scribbling away, they're always telling stories. But one or two of them, yes, I think they were surprised. And they were also keen to, um, to encourage the children because they were quite sort of shy and you know, a little bit nervous about it. So it was nice to give them that little push and give them a boost. Yeah, fantastic. 
Um, Catherine, it's been lovely talking to you. Um, and if you want to, you'll, you'll, you can find um, Catherine um, and her her writings on Soulfully Connecting, which is www.soulfully-connecting.com. But if you'd like to contact her directly, um, go on to her own blog. Um, would you like to give all the details, Catherine? I can, yes. So as we mentioned at the beginning of the interview, I am Spooky Mrs. Green across all the social networks. Um, so my website is SpookyMrsGreen.com or on Twitter I am at Spooky Mrs. Green and the same on Facebook and Instagram. Um, I also have here, if you can see that, a little picture there for people that maybe don't know the Redcliffe novels. Oh right, okay. There is a little picture of the novels for, for people just to take away. Yeah. And if you, um, Catherine is actually, um, has got a listing on Soulfully Connecting as well. Um, I, I keep holding it up because uh, you need to say something and your picture will come up and you can see the picture. Right, okay. <laughs> so there we are, Spooky Mrs. Green. And that's examples of a couple of my novels. They're available on Amazon, but they are also available on lots of other websites. You can get them on iTunes, Smashwords, Barnes & Noble, Waterstones. And the local library. Okay, that's fantastic. Um, well, as I said, it's been a pleasure talking to you. And uh, please get in touch with your internal vampire and <laughs> have a read of uh, Catherine's <laughs> stories. Great, thank you very much for having me. So, my pleasure. Okay, everybody, this is Sue Ellum signing out. Bye for now. Bye bye. Bye.